said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave it also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked 
and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord, God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and dust shall thy eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And I want to talk about for the next little while the danger of listening to snake talk. The danger of listening to snake talk. My brothers and sisters, I don't like snakes. One of the main reasons why I don't know how to fish is because I'm not going anywhere where snakes are. I don't like snakes. I don't like rubber snakes. I don't like toy snakes. I just don't like snakes. It's not a phobia. It's just something that I don't play with. And out of all the snakes in the world, out of the anaconda, out of the rattlesnake, out of the blackhead snake, the, the biggest snake that I dislike is a snake with two feet. I can't stand a snake. And unless you're getting offended, let's look at Genesis chapter 3. Because in Genesis chapter 3, before the curse, the snake walked on two feet. The snake was a wise individual. That The Bible says that he was cunning because he was wise in all that he did. The snake was created to walk around just like Adam and Eve. But I need to tell you, when you start listening to snakes, snakes will get you in trouble. Y'all got time for me to deal with this text. God had already told Adam that everything in this garden you can have. But of one tree you should not touch nor eat thereof. Isn't that just like life? Life, you can have everything you want except another man's wife. Except another man's wife, except another woman's husband, except somebody else's house. It's a shame that you want something that somebody else got. That's just how life is. We are jealous-hearted creatures. We want to one-up somebody. But I stop by here to tell you, as God's messenger, you got to be careful when you learn how to listen to snake talk. I got three points because y'all looking at me already in that, in that tone that you don't want me to talk about you, but I ain't talking about you. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Point number one, unless you don't think I see it in the text, that when you listen to, self, when you listen to snake talk, it brings about self-doubt. Y'all missed it already. I said it brings about self-doubt. And self-doubt is a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. You're looking at me, so let's look at the Bible. The Bible says that the serpent came to the woman. You missed it. I said the Bible says that the snake came to the woman and he asked her, can you eat of the tree? And the woman said, no, because the day we eat thereof, we shall surely die. 
Now listen to the self-doubt. He said to her, you ain't going to die. Okay, y'all didn't come to have church. He said, you ain't going to die. God just don't want you to have good and evil. Now notice, notice, notice. We don't know from chapter 2 to chapter 3 how long things were going. But this we do know that the woman, before she met the snake, wouldn't touch the tree. But when the snake got in her ear, now the tree started looking good and good. Y'all don't know when this shout. She was obedient until the snake brought about self-doubt. And that's what's the problem with some of us. We are obedient until somebody start making us rationalize. Okay, come here, come here. You you don't grew up in church. You know right from wrong. You know good from evil. And then some joker get in your ear and start getting you to rationalize your own salvation, your own conviction. Now you start looking at things different. But if you learn how to lean and depend on the Lord, can't nobody make you self-doubt your salvation. I wish y'all would take the brakes off of me because some of y'all, Reverend, I done went to so-and-so church and so-and-so church did it like that. And you've been coming to Mount Hermon for 20-something years, 30-something years, but then when somebody else try to make you have self-doubt, then you look at the church all differently. I'm in the text. I'm in, I'm in the text. I'm in the text. No, no, the, the serpent, the serpent is just like Satan. Satan is mad because he was kicked out of heaven. He was, he was one of the angelic angels. Matter of fact, he was over the choir. And he didn't like it that they were singing praises unto God and not unto him. So jealousy creeps up. So he don't want them to sing to God. He wants them to sing unto him. And God kicks Lucifer out of heaven along with three fourths of the angelic choir and they land down here on earth and so while he's on earth he's mad because you mess up and I mess up and God forgives us but he mess up one time and he get kicked out okay okay that, that's why we got so much drama in the choir because Satan is mad because the choir is doing his job He's mad at you and I because when we start praising him, it reminds him that that used to be his job and God fired him because he wanted to be high. Baby, there's a lot of folks walking around here and God unfired them 20 years ago. There's a lot of folks up in here thinking that they still got the spirit of God and they got the spirit of Ichabod because God has left them a long time ago. And I want to thank God that even when I have self-doubt, he reminds me that I'm still his child. Because y'all looking at me, how, how reverend do he remind you that he's still his child? Every day he gives me brand new mercy. Every day he keep waking me up. Every day he keep giving me another chance. Every day he lets me know that he loved me. Every day he lets the sun shine on me. Every day he lets some clouds shine on me. So even when I got self-doubt, he reminds me that I'm still his child. Listen, listen, listen. The serpent, Satan, tempted Eve by getting her to doubt God's goodness. And that's the job of, the, of Satan every day is to get you to doubt God's goodness. And I don't know about you, but I can't doubt the goodness of God. He may not answer the prayer like I wanted him to answer, but this is what we do. I need you to pay attention, brothers and sisters, because we get mad talking about God didn't answer the way I wanted him to answer. But you got to realize how you prayed your prayer. Lord, let thy will, you don't miss it. And some things are not in his will because if it was in his will, you would be messed up. But I thank God that when I pray and say, let your will be done, his will always gets done. And when his will get done, I've learned how to... says the serpent Satan tempted Eve by getting her to doubt God's goodness he suggests 
that God was strict, stingy, selfish for not wanting Eve to share his knowledge of good and evil. That, look, look at the self-doubt. He want her to think that God is stingy. He's selfish because he don't want you to know good and evil. That, that ain't it. Y'all looking at me. Satan made Eve forget all that God had given her and focus on one thing she couldn't have. Don't that sound like your friends? You tell them no one time, they forget about the hundred times you done helped them. You tell them no one time, they act like it's the end of the world. What about everything else I done done for you? I woke you up. I started you on your way. You got a roof over your head. You got clothes on your back. You got food on your table. Ain't nobody talking to me, but you get mad because he didn't give you the said it. He didn't give you the color person that you wanted to be with. He didn't give you the house that you wanted, but I gave you somewhere to live. Self-doubt will make you forget all the blessings that God has given you. And oh, if Letha was here, she would say showers of blessings. Because you ought to think about the showers of blessings that he, he puts on your soul. He gave you food, you ain't hungry. You got clothes, you ain't naked. You got a shelter, you ain't out there homeless. You got a car, you ain't out there walking. But you forget about Satan made Eve forget all that God had given her to focus on one thing she couldn't have. Listen, we fall into trouble when we focus on few things we don't have rather than the countless things God has given us. i say that one more time. We get in trouble about the few things that he don't give us and you forget to count the blessings that he gave. Okay, one more time. I got to rewind on my mind. We get in trouble about the few things we don't have, but we forget to count the things that we do have. One more time. I got to rewind in my mind. You get mad because you didn't get the job. You get mad because you didn't get the house, but you ought to thank God that you still got a job. Satan tried to make Eve think that sin is good, pleasant, and wonderful. Uh, you ought to say amen on that one. Because just like Vampire in Brooklyn, Eddie Murphy, sin is good. Fake, 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 fake. Double fake. Sin is good because if it wasn't you wouldn't keep doing it <laughs> oh I came to get I got all my amens in my pocket because you want to act like it ain't good but yet you get drunk every weekend You love to get drunk, but you hate the hangover. You love to commit gluttony to eat, but you hate the belly ache. Oh, I'm going to get a little closer. You love the fellowship, but you just don't want the responsibility. Yeah, uh, first person tell you, sin is bad, then why you keep doing it? Come on, be real. That, that, Paul, Paul said it this way, Romans chapter 17. That's why we wrestle with ourselves every day. When I desire to do good, I find myself doing it. Because I'm wrestling with my flesh. The spirit man says, don't do it, but the flesh says, do it. Okay, y'all want to play holy on me, so let me come get you. Because some of y'all have started a New Year's resolution this year, and you done broke it already. I'm going on a diet. And it seems like when you go on a diet, every commercial got to do with food. You said you ain't eating sweets, and every time you drive around Krispy Kremes, the red light is on. And you say stuff like this, God will just forgive me this one time. Will get you in trouble. You ain't got to say amen. 
I'm already there. Notice, 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 notice. Knowledge of both good and evil seem harmless to her. People usually choose the wrong thing because they have become convinced that those things are good unless they think that bad is better. Woo! Uh, one more time, I, I got to rewind on my mind. They think that good is all right, but bad is better. Okay, because y'all looking at me in this tone that I don't want y'all to look at me in. So let me come down your street and, and make sure I, I ring your doorbell to know I'm talking about you. Huh? You want to do good, but evil is always present. And the reason why evil is always present, because Satan, just like God, know what you like, how you like it, when you like it. That's why the old folks said, notice, an idle mind, I thought y'all knew my grandmama. It's a devil workshop. Because when you're idle, that's when you start thinking of devilish things to do. When you're bored, that's when you get in trouble. When you're bored, you start texting and calling people you ain't got no business talking. When you're bored, you wind, wind up going places you shouldn't go. When you're bored, you end up at somebody's house you ain't supposed to be at. When you're bored, you end up at a place you ain't supposed to. Ain't nobody talking to me because when you're bored, evil seems better than good. Okay, y'all want to play. Y'all want to play. Y'all want to play me. I tell you all, all the time, I'm getting ready to take the matrons, unless when they want to drive, to, to, to the restaurant down there in Auburn. Now, I'm going to try my best when I get to the restaurant to order a glass of water. And I'm going to order some water, but somebody going to order some sweet tea. Somebody going to order a Coke. Somebody going to order a Sprite. And while I'm sitting there trying to drink water, that cup of that Coke going to start sweating, going to start glistening. Ain't nobody talking to me. And I know I should be drinking water. And I'm going to turn around and say, hey, can you bring me a Coke too? Because what sin is always more desirable than good. I'm still in my first point, self-doubt. Let's look at it. Y'all got y'all Bibles open. I told y'all when y'all come to church, y'all gonna start keeping the Bibles open. Y'all ready? Verse number six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was what? To what? And what? She what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They, they've been looking at this tree all this time. But the devil know how to make stuff look even better. Woo-wee. She said, she said, no, nah, we can have everything else. And then when he talked to her, when he whispered in her ear, now the tree look more pleasant I'm going to come down y'all street let me, let, me, let me deal with my sisters for a minute and I'll come back and get the brothers first thing sisters say when they see another woman in a nice outfit girl I saw that, that dress at Dillard's and I was going to get it but uh, now you got it on I'm going to go back and get it You saw it at first, but it didn't catch your eye until Sister Cornbread had it on. The same thing with men. You saw the car first. And you say, no, nah, I can't afford that. Then you see somebody else with it. Man, I'm about to get that car on with. Because what? It becomes more pleasant to the eye. And when it becomes pleasant to the eye, this is when we get in trouble when we start touching it. That's why you can't touch everything. Oh, that, that'll preach yourself right there. I, I know my weakness. When I go to get an oil change at Columbus Mercedes, I know me. I can't test drive nothing. Because 
live by test drive. Got to know your weakness. And knowledge was her weakness. That even after she noticed. Okay. Because y'all don't like my son. It'll bring about self-doubt. Number two, it'll bring about sin that will destroy. Notice, notice. When she ate it, nothing happened. I said when she ate it, nothing happened. But when she gave it to Adam, something happened. I done snuck in your back door. When you sin, it may not may nothing happen to you, but you might bring a sin on your children. It's called generational curse. And just like there's a generational curse, there's a generational promise. And, and my thing is that my seed will be the head and not the tail. My seed to be the lender and not the borrower. That's why Moses said, you write this down and you sit down at the table and you pass it to your children's children and you make sure that a good man not only leaves an inheritance for his children, but he leaves an inheritance for his grandchildren. Y'all don't like this type of preaching. Sin would bring, notice, notice, she ate it and then she gave it to him. Now what the Bible don't tell me, and I had to really look at it, is that Adam was near by when he was talking to the snake. Look at it. She took it, she ate, and she gave it. It didn't say she had to go give it to him. She had to go find him. He was right there. So let me know that people will let you stumble, let you fall, and then try to watch you sin. Because if Adam was the man that he was supposed to have been, he would have told her, don't you touch it. But because, again, sin, talking to a snake, or bring about self-doubt that even he wanted to know good and evil. Have you, have you ever talked to somebody and they was totally against something and then you done sugarcoated it and now they, they down like four flat tires. That, that's what happened. Huh, watch, check this out, check this out. Our sin do not always appear ugly to us. And the pleasures of sin are the hardest to avoid. We have to prepare ourselves of the attractive temptation that may come our way. And there are some temptations that's going to come your way that's going to be attractive, but you're going to have to learn how to yield not. Ain't nobody talking to you got to learn how. Uh, God, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13, but there is no temptation which is common to man that God is faithful that he'll give us an escape route. And God always gives us an escape route. We say something. It is not a something. It is a someone. It is your conscience. It is the Holy Spirit talking to you, telling you not to go that way, telling you not to do that. But yet, sin will always try to get you. Uh, I got to rewind on my mind. Watch this. Well, look at verse number uh, uh, 6 and 7. Notice. What Eve did, she, she looked, she took, she ate, she gave. The battle is often engaged at the first look. Um, I'm saved, I ain't blind. I should have had five amens for some men over here. I'm saved. Nothing wrong with the 
get you every time because the more she looked at the tree, the more he talked to her, the more she looked at it, the more he talked to her, and then she fell and took. I'm, I'm going to get y'all to learn how to shout off by it. The reality is that sin would not only destroy you, but it would destroy people close to you. Here it is, here it is, here it is. When she ate, nothing happened. When he ate, the Bible says, then both of their eyes were open, and they realized that they were naked. One more time, I got rewinding my mind because y'all looking at me in this tone that I don't want you to look at me in. As long as she ate, nothing happened. When he ate, both of their eyes were open that they realized they were naked. Hold on, y'all been naked since y'all was created. So, so, so it lets me know, Sister Woody, it wasn't because they were naked, it was because they felt guilty. children in the room. I'm going to keep this PG. <laughs> Have you noticed, because I, I, I'm, I'm doing marital counseling, I'm trying to tell people, uh, when you're married to a person, you don't mind walking around free in front of them. But it's the ones you ain't married to. I'm trying to help you. Sin will bring about guilt. And the reason why you guilty because you know you're doing wrong. And when they realized they was doing wrong, they had to cover themselves. If you're doing right, you ain't got to cover yourself. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to come get y'all. I'm going to come get y'all. I'm, I'm going to come get y'all one more time. I'm going to come get y'all. Because I have nothing to hide. Whether I come to this church 1 a.m., 4 a.m., or midnight, I don't have to sneak to the church. Because I ain't out doing nothing wrong. It's the ones who do something wrong that's always looking. somebody close to you and that's why God loves us notice what they did they, 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 they tried to sew their own clothes and the Bible says that the voice of God was walking in the cool of the day and he says Adam where are you now he didn't ask Adam that because he didn't know where Adam was. He wanted to know, Adam, where are you at in our relationship? One more time, one more time, one more time. He, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's omnibevident. He knows all, he sees all, he knows where you're at. But when he asks Adam, where are you? Adam, you ain't got the same relationship with me because normally you will talk to me, now you're hiding from me. And that's what happens in the church. Folks will start missing the church because they feel guilty. That ain't the time to miss the church. That's the time to come to church and say, God, I messed up. God, I need you. Ain't nobody talking to me. I don't care if I messed up this morning or last night. I'm still coming to the church to say, God, forgive me. Okay, 
okay, okay. I, I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all. This ain't the time to be fake in church. This is the time to be real because folks are out here dying looking for a savior. Folks are out here dying looking for help. And you ought to be real and let people know you jacked up, you tore up, but thank me to God. Thank you. That even when I'm messed up, even when I'm jacked up, you still love me. Thank you. Even when folks talking about me, you still love me. Thank you. Even when folks do me wrong, I still will serve you. I, for the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you know about my past. I don't even care what you know about what I'm doing. For the rest of my life, I'm going to serve the Lord. thank God for Adam and Eve because listen listen because you asked the question y'all asked some good questions Reverend if Adam and Eve never sinned will we still be walking around naked uh, so yeah, how about y'all got that but here, here's my answer he was already slain Where my Bible readers at? He was already slain from the foundation of the world. So he already knew that they was going to mess up. So he already had a redeemer waiting on us. He already had some blood waiting on us. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never 
I can't hear nobody. It never loses fountain. There is a fountain filled with blood. Sinners plunge beneath their back, lose all their guilt and stand. Anybody know something about the blood? I got to go. You got to be careful. Listening to snake talk. Because snake talk will give you self-doubt. Snake talk will cause sin that would destroy. But thank God there's a savior that delivers. I said thank God that there's a savior that delivers. Let me, let me, let me show you, let me show you. Let's look at what is called the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus takes his inner circle with him and he asks them to pray with him just for one hour. And when he goes to pray to his daddy, he comes back and finds them asleep. So he wakes them up and says, y'all can't even pray with me for one hour? Goes back to pray again and says, daddy, I don't want to do this, but not my will, thy will be done. And when he comes with the rest of the disciples, here come Judas and the soldiers. And Judas told him, the one that I kiss." is the one that is the Jesus and it showed me something Deacon Woody why did Judas have to uh, kiss Jesus because they were all on one accord they all was dressed up that's why the choir ought to dress alike that's why the deacons ought to dress alike that's why the ushers ought to dress alike because everybody need to know that you're all on the same team Ain't nobody come to have church with me. So Judas said, the one that I kiss is the Messiah. And Jesus said, whom do you seek? They said, we are seeking Jesus. He said, that's me. What, what you want? And, and there, Peter, get ready to pull out his sword. And he tell Peter, put up your sword. That He that lived by the sword shall die by the sword. But it was already too late because Peter cut a man's ear off. Now the old preacher said that Peter was going for his, his neck but the man ducked so Peter got his ear and Jesus just reached down and picked the man ear up and put it back on his ear and said I still got all power in my hand. I wish I had some help in here and can't you see Jesus he never says a mumbling word he goes and he walks with them and they beat them all night long. I said they beat him all night long. They, they whipped him with a thorn and they put a crown on his head. They pulled his beard. They spit on him and said, if thou be the Christ, tell us who's doing this to you. But it never said a mumbling word. And I hear the old folks said they marched him from kangaroo court to kangaroo court, from Pilate to Herod, from Herod to Caesar. They kept on trying my Jesus, but it never said a mumbling word. I feel my help here already. Can't you see Jesus walking up the hill called Calvary, the Via Della Rosa? God got us healed. He's carrying this cross. And I heard them say, Must Jesus bear the cross along and on the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you and me. It was all right for them to lay him on the cross because he was the sacrifice lamb. But they forgot what he said. If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Can't you see I'm lifting up Jesus? And the more they lived, the more he drew, the higher he went, more people came to the cross and I heard him say Father forgive them for they know not what they do and every now and then I got to pray that prayer Father forgive them for they know not what they do is there anybody here know what happened on the cross the sun refused to shine the moon went down in blood the earth began to reel and rock what happened Johnson he died anybody here no he died he died anybody 
to him no he died but I'm so glad that ain't the end of the story early I said early early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands is there anybody here no he got up is there anybody here no he got power to make your wall right power to make your toe right power to make your lip right if y'all don't mind slip your hand in your neighbor hand if you don't mind hold their hand don't hold it like a dead fish don't hold it like a jelly fix say neighbor be not dismayed whatever be the tide God will God will take care of you won't it do it won't it do it won't it fight your battles won't it dry your tears won't it calm your fears say yeah have you tried them ain't it alright do me a favor and I gotta go slip your arm around your neighbor shake your neighbor rock your neighbor say neighbor I may not know three things I may not know two things but I
Say it one more time. They need to hear it. Say it one more time. Never you lose know. his power. Yeah, no matter how low you go, I want Never you to know. 